welcome into the show, everybody. Not live on Facebook Live, not live on anything, really. Uh, I don't think I really perfected the live on YouTube uh, last weekend, so we're going to go ahead and do uh, this recording style, and then I'll possibly try to do uh, live on YouTube uh, next week, just because... I don't really know how to do it. Uh, I think I got it, but it didn't want to post for, for whatever reason. So I'll figure the, all that out, and then I'll get back to you guys. But welcome into Fourth and a Mile, presented by Planet Adam. I am your host, the Pharaoh of Planet Adam, or God King, if you will. I am Adam Fernandez, and we've got a lot to talk about tonight. First off, guys, don't forget to go over to Bandcamp.com. Show some love for my homegirl Jocelyn Gonzalez and her band, A Bloody Chasm. The people that do the entrance theme for this show, as well as quite a few other songs, that's not their only song, and if you thought so, then I'm sorry. But they have a lot of great music, a lot of great hardcore, dark, kind of sinister rock and roll, but it's good music, and Jocelyn is one of the baddest-ass chicks you will ever meet in your life. So, with that, let's get on to it. We've got a lot to talk about in the world of college football. A lot to talk about. Well, today is going to be college football. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, uh, preface all of this with this as well. Yes, still drinking Dr. Pepper. Uh, I'm going to start doing two, three shows a week, somewhere in there. Uh, one, or the idea is to do maybe one on college football, one on Major League Baseball. Uh, baseball season's already almost done. We've got a month left, well, less than a month now. Uh, 25 days is what they were saying left. Uh, so we might go ahead and transition for the off season to just one show on baseball a month, just talking about all the behind-the-scenes news, free agent signings, that kind of thing and then uh, focus more on college football until the college football season's done, and then I don't know what I'm going to do at that point. I, I never have a plan. There's no such thing as Adam with a plan. So uh, as of right now, though, the idea is to do one-in-one, one, uh, but I might go ahead and transition it to two-in-one or you know, vice versa uh, just to keep everyone on tabs with what's going on in the worlds of college football and Major League Baseball. But as of right now, we're just doing one and one I'll probably do another show on Friday talking about baseball, uh, what's going on with that. Right now, I was watching my Cardinals out there in the living room, and then I came in to do my show, and Alyssa went ahead and turned it to Gilmore Girls, uh, which she knows that that's going to be abruptly turned off as soon as I'm done recording this show. There's no way around it. It's Major League Baseball. It's the St. Louis Cardinals. Alyssa's going to have to deal with that. Shh, don't tell her I said that. All right, so let's get into everything that's going on in the world of college football. Uh, first off, a pretty funny story. Kind of a sad story, I guess, too. Uh, just considering how far a team has fallen. This was a team that won the national title back in 1999. A uh, year after Peyton Manning left, uh, Tennessee last week, last Saturday, got beat by Sun Belt bottom dweller Georgia State at home, thirty-eight to thirty. That was probably as embarrassing of a loss as any Tennessee fan will ever have to endure. Uh, Clay Travis was making a point. I believe it was yesterday's show where maybe it was Monday show, where he was saying that it's not as bad of a loss as, say, losing the national championship or uh, making it to the Final Four tournament and losing there, which they did. They lost to Purdue, I believe, a couple of years ago in the NCAA Final Four tournament. Um, so he doesn't believe it's as big of a deal. I think it's a real light on what's going on up there at Tennessee uh, they have a new head coach, well, second year now, um, and they're just not playing good football. I honestly believe it has to do a lot with the recruiting. They have a rich area of people to recruit from, but they're not getting those recruits. Those recruits are going to Ole Miss or, well, maybe not Ole Miss, but Mississippi State to Alabama to Georgia. They're going around the country. 
They're just not staying in the state of Tennessee, which is where the volunteers would want them to stay because that's, you know, their home base and uh, that's the kind of athletes that they're trying to recruit, but they're just not getting them. So after this loss, uh, as of today, Jordan Murphy and Terrell Bailey, two, uh, two members of the Tennessee football team, have left the program after the embarrassing loss on Saturday. Uh, no real reason has been given as to why they left, but Murphy, and this is something you'll never, ever hear me say again, Murphy's Twitter retweeted a tweet. You'll never, ever hear me say that again. Okay, one more time. Murphy's Twitter retweeted a tweet that was poking fun at the fact that the Panthers got paid $950,000 to go play Tennessee and beat the Volunteers. Uh, After that tweet, uh, it was deleted uh, almost immediately, but it was seen, so we know what happened, and that could be a big reason as to why he left the program is just because he didn't feel comfortable there anymore after making that tweet. Uh, or just because he just does not, his heart's just not there uh, in Knoxville anymore after getting just beat by Georgia State. Uh, Georgia State, I think, is an improving team down there in the Sun Belt. I don't think that they're going to be bowl eligible. I don't think they're quite that good yet. Uh, but they're they're an improving team. Uh, they're playing out of what used to be um, uh, the Braves' home stadium. Uh, and so they just got that upgrade, I believe it was two years ago. Uh, so, uh, things are looking up for that program, but they are right now not in any shape to ever beat an SEC team, but they beat an SEC team. Go figure. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but the Vols need to do some better recruiting. They need to get some better players in. Jeremy Pruitt, again, his second year as the head coach in Tennessee. And that right there is the that is the highlight of his career, and it's a really low light, uh, to be honest with you. So that's just some news coming out of the world of college football. Um, I do want to talk about something else that's kind of college football, but also video games. Um Everyone who is a college football fan or has played college football or college basketball even uh, on their PlayStations or Xboxes uh, know that we have been without a NCAA basketball game for some time. Since 2010, I believe, was the last one that they released. Uh, But since 2013, the year that NCAA 14 football was released by EA, we have been without a college football game. Uh, but the there's a team up in Canada called Canuck Play who are creating a game called Doug Flutie's Maximum Football 2019. Uh, last year's game was their second game ever, uh, and they made some drastic improvements from the first game up until last year. The improvements from last year to this year are utterly amazing. I only have the one screenshot. I, sh- I wish I had got- grabbed some more. But this just shows what the players are going to be looking like. This game is releasing this month. Uh, They're just waiting for Xbox to, or Microsoft, I should say, to do whatever Microsoft is going to do. This isn't a uh, screenshot of gameplay or anything like that. This is just a player model. Um, But this is the West Virginia team. And the way that they're going about doing this is because of the reason that college football is no longer allowed to be uh, played on a video game. College basketball, the same thing. Uh, It has to do with the Ed O'Bannon lawsuit from a few years ago when he wanted to be paid for uh, his likeness rights. And to be honest with you, I kind of agree with him there. Um, And so there were a lot of other former college players that were jumping on uh, on that bandwagon as well, and they didn't want to have the game uh, be uh, be sold without them getting some kind of uh, financial incentive to allow their uh, likenesses to be used in the video game. Um, if you played 20, uh, NCAA 2014, 
uh, say you were using Texas A&M, for example, um, the quarterback was not named Johnny Manziel, but he was from Texas, had the same height and weight as Johnny Manziel, had the same abilities as Johnny Manziel, and was number two, like Johnny Manziel. Uh, so that's why they stopped playing that, or stopped selling that, stopped making that video game. Uh, was because they didn't want to have to pay out all these players and lose some money in the long run. Uh, but these guys from Canuck Play have put together this video game, which will be uh, a college football game in itself, where the teams look similar to the real teams, um, for the most part. Uh, but they have a very in-depth uh, uh, dynasty mode, if you're into that kind of thing, like I am, I love playing my college football game. I still play NCAA 14 to this day. Um, so these guys are going to be, uh, yeah, it, it has a great dynasty mode. Uh, the rosters are completely generated by a guy that does the rosters for MLB The Show for, uh, for Operation Sports, a guy named Ryden something. Uh, I don't know what his name is. I'm not being paid by these guys to promote their game. I'm really excited about this game. That's why I'm talking to you guys about it. Um, but uh, it's going to be, I think, a really fun game. Uh, a lot of people will sit here and tell you that the graphics aren't up to snuff. I think the graphics are just fine. I think the graphics are only going to get better as the years go on and they get more money in the, uh, in the pockets of Canuck Play. So uh, I would recommend everybody when that game comes out, if you're a college football fan, if you love playing NCAA 14, go out and get this game. Um, it's not something you're going to be able to buy at GameStop. You're going to have to buy it at the uh, PlayStation Store or whatever the Xbox version is. Uh, you're going to have to buy it online and play uh, and play it through your gaming system. So uh, I think it's going to be fun. I As soon as it comes out, I've already told Alyssa I am dedicating about two days to do nothing but play that game. So, all right. So, again, I'm not being paid by these guys. In fact, I pay them. You know, as a member of their Patreon, I pay them. So, they're not giving me any money or any kind of publicity for this. Uh, I might put it up on their uh, uh, Discord server later uh, after, uh, after I'm done, you know, putting it on. YouTube and on Facebook and all that. But uh, so let's get into college football. Uh, we're going to start with what I think is going to end up being one of the more fun games of the day uh, Saturday, and that's going to be LSU and Texas out in Austin. Uh, this is a game where uh, LSU is basically arguing the Texas is back quote as you've been hearing people say for well pretty much since January of this year when uh, Georgia beat or when uh, Texas beat Georgia uh, I believe in the Sugar Bowl um, but yeah they keep saying Texas is back Texas is back LSU is uh, priding themselves on proving that uh, Texas is in fact not back uh, in fact uh Two, uh, two prominent LSU Tigers, one former, one current, have had a lot to say about this game going into it. Uh, Leonard Fournette, the former running back, first round, fourth overall pick in the NFL draft from LSU, uh, went on to say, quote, we will beat the shit out of them country boys. Uh, and then current linebacker in... Uh, if he's going to start talking, he I hope he has a big game on Saturday. Uh, Clavon, I believe I'm saying his last, uh, I believe I'm saying his name right. Clavon Chason uh, says uh, I don't really find him too as too much of a threat. Talking about Sam Ellinger, uh, Chason is a guy that had been recruited by Texas. He's from Houston. Um, and he was very close to signing with Texas, but decided to go ahead and go with LSU instead, who were also after him. Uh, the, I guess, belief would be that he was doing, uh, that he went to LSU because 
He just thinks the SEC is better football and better TV time. Uh, he'll make a, a better way, or he'll make it'll make his way to the NFL a lot easier uh, going to LSU than it would to Texas. Who Texas gets a lot of TV time. They really do, but the Big Twelve isn't thought of as highly anymore as what they once were, for good reason. The LSU is defense option, or the Big Twelve rather is defense optional. Um, but that right there is Clavon Chazon. Uh, and again, he was saying that Sam Ellinger, the quarterback from Texas, uh, is not much of a threat. Uh, they played against each other in high school one game in which uh, Chazon's team won 21-14. to He is saying that Ellinger is more legs than arms. Um, and so he knows how to he knew how to beat him in high school. He basically knows how to beat him here at the college level. Um, so that's you know that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of uh, a, a lot of good uh, uh, chalkboard talk right there. You know, uh, by Chazon, I am rooting for LSU because I absolutely hate the Longhorns. Uh, a lot of you guys know that by now. If you've watched this show long enough, you know that I cannot stand them at all. Um, but I'm just hoping that if you talk the game, you play the game, and uh, you prove what you were saying. So let's get into the odds on this game. This is Texas versus LSU, 6 p.m. on ABC. LSU right now is the four and a half point favorite. The over under on this game is 51 and a half. I actually have LSU winning by 10. I actually, it would not surprise me if it's a lot bigger than even 10. I don't think that Texas is back. I don't think the Big 12 is as good as what they was what they want to think they are. I think when it comes down to it, if you rank the conferences, uh, the Power Five conferences, the Big 12 is probably ranked number four. Uh, SEC is number one. Big 10 and ACC are kind of fighting it out for number two. The other one is number three. Uh, Big 12 is number four, and I think Pac-12 uh, falls in the, the bottom there. The Pac-12 is not what they used to be either. Uh, and eventually SEC, the SEC won't be what the SEC is. But as of right now, the SEC is. The SEC is the premier conference in college football. And LSU, and this game will go a long way for Texas fans to say that Texas is back. Or it will go a long way for Texas detractors to say that no, Texas is not back. Uh, LSU might be the second best team in the conference, but they could be as far down as the fourth or fifth best team in the conference. And I still think that they are going to beat Texas by at least 10. It would not surprise me if it's uh, 17, 20, 24, something like that. Uh, Texas is touting the fact that they beat Georgia, another SEC team, and a team that a lot of people would argue is probably the second best team in the SEC uh, in the Sugar Bowl last year. But... I'm sorry, I am a firm believer in the fact that uh, Georgia was not into that game. They showed up to that game just to show up, just for the money, that was it. And not the players show up for the money, the school in general showed up for the money. Um, because they felt they should have been in the playoff, they weren't in the playoff, they didn't have anything to play for, they felt that pride was not something worthy of uh, of their attention or their time. Uh, so they came out and took a big shit on the field. Uh, and so Texas looked really good in that game. I don't think that that's truly Texas. I don't think that that was anywhere near truly Georgia or SEC football. So yes, for that game, I will choose uh, LSU over Texas. And... I think they're going to cover the spread. I think they're going to cover the spread quite handily. Uh, the over-under in that game, I told you guys, was 51.5. I don't even think it's going to be that. I would pick the under. Uh, I would honestly believe 
Uh, LSU would win this game something in the area of 24 to 10, uh, maybe 20 to 10. Um, I think it's going to be a low scoring game. LSU does not have a high octane offense, but they're a very powerful offense. They love to run the ball and they love to run the ball down your throat, but that takes a lot of time to do. So uh, they're not going to be a team that will put up 50 points against someone. Um, and that's why the over under on this one is so low, but I just, I think their defense is good enough to where Texas will be lucky to get into double digits in this game. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on now to what I think is actually the biggest game of the day. And no, not because I support Texas A&M, but because they're playing against the number one team in the country, Clemson. And they are the number, what are they now? Number 10, I think in the country, number 11. So, this year they're going into Clemson. Last year they lost by, what was it, four, I think, two Clemson it, uh, at Kyle Field. A very good, exciting game last year that was one, uh, one bad fumble call away from going the complete opposite way. And Texas would have, or Texas A&M uh, would have won that game. And uh, we probably wouldn't be talking about Clemson as national champions. Well, we probably might still be. But this year, they're playing 2 o'clock uh, on ABC. Uh, so it's the game that's going to lead up to the uh, Texas and LSU game. Or no, 2.30, I'm sorry, on ABC. And that's local time, so central time, guys. Not, uh, uh, not Eastern time. If you're living out there uh, along the Atlantic coast, first off, stay safe. Uh, that storm is not something to mess with. But second off, uh, I'm talking about here in Texas, uh, Central Time. Uh, the game ought to be, uh, or the game will be at 2:30 on ABC here. Clemson is actually favored to win this one even bigger than what LSU is favored to win by a lot. In fact, Clemson is favored to win by 19 and a half. I honestly think Texas A&M is going to lose, but I think it's going to be probably just as close of a game as last year. I don't think Clemson will cover the spread. Uh, I didn't get the over-under on this one. Uh, I'm not even sure I even saw it, but I didn't write it down, whatever it is. Um, but I honestly expect Texas A&M to go in there and play Clemson very tough, fall just short in the end. Maybe uh, maybe this – and these are two offenses that can score quite a few points. Uh, so it would not surprise me for this game to be something like 42-35. to 35 somewhere in that area. I'm sure there'll be some field goals there too. So maybe uh, 41 to 38 or 41 to 30 or something like that. Uh, but I don't expect Clemson to cover 19 and a half. I think Texas A&M will prove to be quite game for this game. Uh, so it'll be, it's going to be fun. And I'm looking forward to that at 2:30. My older brother's actually going to be there at Clemson for this game and his wife. Uh, so my mother is driving up to, uh, Austin, which is where my brother, old Georgetown is where he lives, uh, to babysit the girls and, uh, ought to be, uh, a fun time for them. And I'll probably be texting him throughout the game. Uh, so after that, let's go ahead and move on to, uh, my, uh, uh my smaller schools. That's, that was kind of the idea behind the football show was to give some, airtime to these group of five schools uh and so that's more of what i want to kind of start leaning towards is doing more group of five football than uh power five football but still you know touch on the power five stuff going on like the story out of tennessee but we're going to start here when it comes to group of five we are going to start with my favorite you guys all know this by now y'all saw me wearing the uh the shirt this past weekend which, by the way, I still need to get all my stuff up behind me. I'm, it's, you know, work kills me. Uh, this is not my main job. If you guys think it is, then you guys think I'm probably homeless because I have never made a dime on doing this show. Uh, but uh, we're going to go ahead and start with my boys, the FAU Owls. And I have, uh, as the picture here, Achilles Leroy, who I think... Uh, uh, is going to be the next real good linebacker to come out of FAU. I believe if I'm right, he's a sophomore this year. Um, uh, he's basically taking the place for Aziz Alshire, who uh, was a senior last year, had an injury, and never played again. Uh, 
Um, but uh, Aziz Alshair was a great linebacker for FAU. I think Achilles Leroy, just that name. I mean, that name right there is a tough damn name. Uh, I love that name. Uh, but he's going to be uh, – He's taking over this year to replace Shire, uh, or Al Shire, uh, but uh, they're playing this week against UCF, who UCF is two years ago the team that claimed they were the national champions uh, <laughs> because they went undefeated and they beat Auburn in the Peach Bowl. Uh, Auburn was very much in that game like what Georgia was last year, uh, not really there to play or compete they were just there to bring in a, a good hefty amount of money for their school uh just by showing up um so that's i think why ucf won that game uh, the odds on this game are uh where's it at there ucf is and they're playing at 6 p.m on cbs sports network uh if you guys don't have cbs sports network go out and get it because that's the only way you're gonna be able to watch this game uh, UCF is favored to win this one by seven and a half points. The over/under on this one is uh, 69. <laughs> 69, dude. Uh, uh, UCF, I think, will. As much as I love my Owls, I think UCF will uh, cover this. Nah, you know what? We're gonna go with FAU. We're gonna go with the Owls. They're playing at home in Paradise in Boca Raton. The Lane Train is gonna be rolling in. FAU wins this game by 14. That's where the, that's the pick we're going to make there. Let's go on to another game involving a small school, and this one against a big school. Last year, the biggest upset of the entire college football season was when the Old Dominion Monarchs played at home against Virginia Tech in week three or four, and they won. They won that game, which was the biggest win in the history of Old Dominion football. And that goes back to the into the 30s when they were, uh, what was it, where were they called then? William and Mary College of Norfolk. Uh, that was the biggest game in the history of uh, Old Dominion football. They ended up beating Virginia Tech there. This year, though, they have to go into Blasburg. This game will be at 11 a.m. on ESPN. The over-under, or I don't know what the over-under on this one was. I was looking at the odds, and I was saying that was the over-under. But no, the odds are Virginia Tech by 55 and a half. Let's go, Monarchs. We're going to root for another big upset, probably the biggest upset I'll ever uh, pick. I'm going old D, uh, ODU. They can do it a second time. Old Dominion football. Beats Virginia Tech by three in Blacksburg. Blacksburg, sorry. Old Dominion wins. What a great story that would be for a team that will probably not win another game this year. They are 1-0 right now, though. They beat Norfolk State last week. So, uh, Final game of the day to discuss will be UTSA at Baylor, 4 p.m. in Waco. Uh, apparently this game is not going to be on TV. I uh, saw no kind of uh, television coverage. It might be on local TV here in uh, in San Antonio. Uh, I saw that they played a couple games on local television last year, the Roadrunners did, uh, in which Don Harris from WOAI was the announcer. God, is he awful, by the way. Oh, God. that's That's why he's sticking to... Uh, local television sports. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'd be a great uh, uh, a great voice for, for any sport. I'd probably be a lot better than Don Harris. But Jesus, he was awful. But that's beside the point. This one, 4 p.m., Baylor picked to win by 28 and a half. I expect Baylor to win by at least 29, so I'm going I'm gonna go ahead and uh, choose them to win this one and cover the spread. Uh, Baylor is a vastly improved team than what they were a couple years ago when they lost to UTSA up there in Baylor or in, in Waco. Uh, UTSA, on the other hand, has been kind of on a downward slide. Uh, they have really not done a lot of uh, great recruiting. Granted, it's hard for a, for a uh, Conference USA school to do some great recruiting, but considering that you're here in the state of Texas, 
you should be able to recruit a lot better than what they have and possibly even start playing for some Conference USA championships. I don't see them doing that, at least not this year, probably not for the next several years. Uh, UTSA is a fun team to watch, but they're not going to win a lot. Uh, they won last week against Incarnate Word, and won pretty handily against Incarnate Word, but Incarnate Word's an FCS school, another local San Antonio school. I don't see UTSA being able to do that against Baylor. Baylor will win, and they will win by at least 28 and a half, by 29. Uh, so, yeah, that's how that's going to end up going. Um, I'm hoping to watch as many of these games as possible. Uh, the problem for me is going to be that FAU uh, and UCF play at the exact same time as uh, Texas and LSU. So I'll probably go try to flip back and forth between the two, uh, mainly focusing on FAU because I am a FAU fan. Uh, for those of y'all that don't know, I'm originally from South Florida, so I will root for the South Florida schools over just about anybody other than maybe Texas A&M, uh, but that's because there's a little bit of a bloodline there for Texas A&M. But uh, I will be watching the FAU game, and hopefully it'll be a lot better of a game than it was last year when they lost to UCF. Uh, and it was actually kind of a, a fun game to watch, but UCF uh, pulled away and they never stopped choking, uh, choking out the Owls. But I think this year's FAU team is a better team than last year's. They don't have Motor Singletary, but the way they looked last week against Ohio State, yes, they... Uh, they lost, what was it, 40, 45 to 21, something like that. Um, but they gave up four touchdowns in the first quarter, and a lot of people would say that it was garbage time after that. It really wasn't. Justin Fields played the most of the rest of the game, uh, got taken out in the fourth quarter, but uh, FAU was stopping him, was stopping OSU. OSU was continuing with their game plan, but they just – weren't having nearly the success that they did in the first quarter. Uh, I think uh, it took a little bit for FAU to shake off the nerves, uh, and so they started playing better football. I don't think they're a better team than Ohio State. I don't think they're even close. But to consider the how tough they were for from the second quarter on, I think they're a far better team than what they were last year. I think they're a team that's going to be bowl eligible at the end of the year, and I think that they might even uh, pull off the Conference USA Championship again. We'll have to wait and see about that one. But, yeah, so that's what I'm going to be watching this weekend, uh, as well as some Cardinals baseball if I get the chance to do that too. Uh, this ought to be a fun weekend. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a weekend where I just stay at home all day and veg out. Uh, NFL starts on Sunday. I plan on watching some NFL because, uh, well, I spent $100 to get the uh, NFL, uh, not the Sunday ticket, the game pass. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and watch some NFL this weekend as well. So, all right, guys. Oh, don't tell Alyssa about that hundred dollars either. So, all right, guys, I will talk to you guys later. I hope you had a great time here with me. I hope you guys have a great rest to rest of your Wednesday nights. Uh, have a great Thursday. I'll come back and talk to you guys on Friday. I love you all. Vessels and bye bitches. And I was going to turn it off, and then it just zoomed out on me. There we go.